often talk about this issue. In fact, we haven't touched on it, but it's been a really big issue uh, uh, this week. I took to the streets of Wellington and asked this question. Do you reckon that marijuana should be made uh, legal for personal use? Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Marijuana? Absolutely. But, you know, pot. You know, uh, marijuana. Oh, um... I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not 100% sure on that. No. Mm, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Definitely for medical use. Yes. I believe it should be legal for medical use if they need to use it. I think it should be a month, I'd like you. A bit limited. It's completely harmless. Well, it's not completely harmless, though, is it? I think as long as you're responsible, over 18, maybe even over 25, actually. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone that has a schizophrenic disorder or anyone that has health complications that uh, the doctor wouldn't recommend it. Otherwise, who's been ever hurt from having uh, the odd puff and joint? Just seen a lot of people go pretty downhill. It's no different than drinking beer. Yeah, I don't think it harms anyone because more people get drunk and go out be violent, but if they smoke it, they can't really be bothered getting off the couch. And they just sit there and enjoy things. People should be allowed to pick and choose what they do. <sighs> yeah. It's hard to do when you have a sweat, you know, you can't be bothered getting off the couch, the Napier sunset. You know what I mean? Hey, well, it's all these people got off the couch to come in. Yes, they did! That, <laughs> <laughs> Every week. And, and, a, and a big crowd tonight talk about this. We haven't talked about this, but just around the panel, because we've got a few guests in this tonight. Around the panel, do we need a law change on this issue? Yes. Stuart Nash. Well, what I'm going to say, for medical use, yes, we do. Outside of medical use. For, for a, a bit of pot on your person, make it legal. Yes or no? Uh, I'm, uh, I don't mean to sound um, on the fence, but I need to see a lot more evidence to convince me that we legalise or decriminalise. Wow, all but right. medical use, yes. OK, Alfred Naro, legalise okay. cannabis for personal use. So here's a straight-up answer, no. But here's the reasons why. There's a lot of profiling around medicinal use, especially those with terminal illness. But what we don't have enough profiling is the impact and effect, health, social-wise, mm. and even psychologically, with the use of cannabis. We have had so I think it's important, dozens while we of talk about the sympathy, and, and I, I agree there We've is a sympathy, but let's talk about the impact. We don't talk about enough of the social impact. Mm. Wallace, let's talk about this. We've got child abuse. We've got domestic violence. We've got binge drinking. We've got a whole lot of social issues. Do you really no, think New Al Zealand Alfred, needs Alfred. another drug you are, can I to complicate can, can I suggest that we are now... Uh, the people... You are out of step with the times. Yeah. You are out of step with the times. I don't think Society so. Society is changing. Yeah. Society is changing. Says who? A poll of 1,029 people? Says the population. I don't says think the so. population. But, but Wallace, generation. I tell you what's not out of step is that when I was down there at Spring Hill Prison on a Monday, talking to some of the inmates there, let's talk about the reality. See, it's all very nice for us here in a nice, cosy, warm cafe, right? But let's talk about the impact that it's having on people in their lives. Stop broken families, broken there. lives, start off with cannabis. Are you going to deal with that? Absolutely not. Stop strong, strong stuff from Alfred Naro. What do you think? Do you think that cannabis should be made legal, a bit on your person, what do you think? Well, we've always yes believed that yes de no. decriminalisation should be the law. Legalisation? Yeah, decriminalisation. And then we're reviewing that as well because we agree that the world's changing. There's a younger generation. And we're sick of this being treated as a crime when it's a health issue. Yeah, it I needs to be decriminalised well, and treated as a on, health on, issue. Stop on. putting young Māori in prison. For, we have more people in prison for this than anything else. We cannot help their health issues, Alfred, if we keep locking them up and throwing away the kids. Why have another drug? Exactly. Well, we already have it. That's the point. Alcohol is... You, we can't pro so prohibit okay? alcohol. We've got drugs. We're swimming in drugs. The bigger question no. is why are people become dependent on drugs and where can they get help for their dependency? Mm. And if it's a crime, it's really difficult for them to go to the health professional and say, I'm addicted to marijuana. It's not easy to do because you're admitting to committing All a right, crime. All right, we'll come back to you, but uh, hayley has got some guests in the audience. Yes, I'm with Dr Chris Wilkins, a senior researcher at Massey University for Drugs Policy. So you should be right up in this. Do you think we should decriminalise marijuana, cannabis? Um, well, I don't think you can answer that question yet. So it's, um, that's only part of the question. So the real thing for me would be what type of regime are we talking about? So if we were talking about a profit-driven commercial market where you had retail outlets and marketing advertising, I wouldn't be in favour of that. But if we're talking about a social club model, a non-commercial model, a decriminalisation model, I think there could be benefits there. 
Now, there's obviously health issues, though, with marijuana for young people. That's right. So, so no, if you, no one's denying that there's health risks related to cannabis use, but occasional moderate cannabis use is in the ballpark of all the other drugs that we allow to be legally sold. So tobacco is the most health risk drug, and we allow that to be sold. Um, but what about booze? Exactly. So there's booze, but. The right type of regime, what I'm talking about, is yes, we've got to make sure that this is not sold to 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds, and we have a very controlled regime that's focused on public health and not commercial profit. So we're actually surrounded by a lot of adults who are legally self-medicating right now. Do you think, or what are actually the medicinal qualities of cannabis? Well, in terms of medicinal, I mean, for cancer patients, it, 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 it um, helps with vomiting and just general pain relief. So there are medicinal values to this, but as a recreational drug, there are also benefits to people as well, just as much as there are benefits for drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco. Now, between you and I, would you rather be hanging out with someone who is mellow and stoned or crazy and drunk? Well, I'd rather be hanging out with someone who is, is responsible about whatever substance they're using, and that is an adult, and also takes responsibility for public health and their community in terms of restricting that drug to young people. Well said. Thank you very much. Back to you, Wallace. Yeah. Well, look, I want to sort of uh, add to back to see what do you think. I'd love, to, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, because this is a big issue. What do you make of what Chris said there? He made a lot of sense, but Wallace, let me tell you one thing. I've got four children. We've got two legal drugs. Those two legal drugs, uh, about a thousand Kiwis a year die. The, uh, the cost of the, the society is about seven, um, uh, seven billion dollars a year. Well, if you legalize this and you condone it, I don't want my kids smoking drugs. I don't want my kids near drugs. You got this, you got tobacco. Do, the question is, do we want to add another one? I'm all for legalizing it for medicinal purposes, but do we want to add all another right. one and, and Hayley, face the cost Hayley. of that? I'm here with Dak De Green. He is the spiritual leader of the re-legalised cannabis movement. Now, you've actually been to jail for this, haven't you? Uh, yes, I have. I've been out four months. I, um, uh, the police think it's a good idea to send a campaigner like me to jail. So uh, when we're talking about not sending young people to jail, how about not sending old white men to jail as well? Can I ask you, what did you learn from that? Um, I learned that it's an absolute waste of time to send people to jail for cannabis. I mean, it's a nonsense. There is much more danger in alcohol and uh, cigarettes, but tobacco, um, sorry, uh, cannabis, of course, we should be smoking cannabis. It should be compulsory from 60 years old. Compulsory even. What about the Federated Farmers? What do you guys think? Do you think we should legalise, decriminalise cannabis? Well, if we can tax it, why not? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we need all the money we can get. Yeah. So why not? We might as well go for it. <laughs> what do you think it's like to grow in New Zealand? Do you think it's a good crop? Oh, I think we've got the ideal climate conditions for growing <laughs> the stuff, but um, I, I want to watch out for these guys. They might hit me over the head with something. But um, no, no. But yeah, no. I think I think we're probably going to start relaxing a wee bit. But do you think there could be sort of security issues around the farm if you do have huge crops of weed? Yes. yes. We have enough security issues now with um, like regional councils and everything else and what have you, but, but that's OK. We're, we, all, we love each other, that's right. All right, the Federated Farmers. Uh, Hayley, like Hayley, 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 uh, you've just blown my mind. I don't need pot to blow my mind. Is there a person in the audience with actually a moving sign? What? Just, just behind you? A moving sign? Is there sign? a guy with a moving oh, sign? Yes. <laughs> wow! Round of applause for that dude. Yay! That's just like... What, whatever you're on, dude, come again. Um, I'll pay you to change the sign. Hey, Alpha, what do you think? The Federated Farmers brought up a very interesting... They brought up the business model of marijuana. Think of the tax. $200 million a year tax you could earn that could be ploughed into more flag referendums or anything you want. <laughs> Ima imagine the flag referendums you could idea, use Wallace. for marijuana. Yeah. So let's, let's compare... $5,000 a kilogram yeah. for marijuana, $5 a kilo for tomatoes. Yeah. Then we could feed our kids. So look, that. Yeah, OK, it's an interesting point. It's a fair point to make. So if you look at other jurisdictions and reports that are across the world, over in the States, for instance, what they found from alcohol and tobacco. So they've generated something like 15 to $20 billion worth of tax revenue. But the cost for the health and the social cost is $200 billion. 
So the truth is, it doesn't weigh up. You can, you right. can try and gain the revenue, but the cost overall, health-wise okay. and social-wise, is not worth it. All right. It doesn't pay. All right, all right. Lots more to be said about that. I wish we had more time, but stay with us. Your thoughts on, on Twitter at TV. Back soon. Thank <music> you.